right, guys. So we are all done with fibers. And now we're going to start talking about yarns. So in this class, I'm going to talk about yarns, yarn processing, and different kinds of yarns, so types of yarns. So a yarn is a continuous strand of textile fibers or textile filaments. And we use the yarn to make a textile fabric. So a yarn is the main component of a fabric. Most of the textile materials are made out of yarns. Um, and we use yarns also for sewing thread, for embroidery thread, to make strings, to make ropes. So there are a lot of different uses for yarns. And we can make so many different kinds of yarns. We can produce them in different sizes, in different textures, we can give them different characteristics. So your fiber properties are going to affect how your yarn behaves, but you can also change how your yarn behaves by changing the structure of your yarn and how you're making your yarns. Uh, the yarn uh, type and quality is related to the cost of production, the quality of production, and performance characteristics of the yarn. So these are some different examples. Um, this is some filament bulk yarn. Um, this, you can see all these short fibers protruding through the fiber. So this is a spun yarn, uh, but it's twisted to create that continuous strand. Um, this is another one. This is uh, what we call a fancy yarn. It's called chenille. It's a completely different type of yarn. Uh, those are novelties. So you can see a lot of those different type of yarns. They have different amounts of hairiness. This one has a whole lot of hairiness, for example. They have different amounts of twist. Um, and if it's a filament, you don't really see any of those tiny little fibers sticking out of the yarn. Um, we can make covered yarns. So there are a lot of different kinds of things you can do uh, to create different yarns. Based on the length of the fiber, we have two main categories of yarns, spun yarns and filament yarns. Spun yarns are made out of short staple fibers. So those are usually natural fibers like cotton fibers, wool fibers, you know, those come in shorter staples. So to make them a continuous thread, you have to put them all parallel, twist them, and that process is called spinning. So when we make yarns out of those short fibers, we call them spun yarns. Uh, when we make yarns out of filaments, filaments are already continuous. So you can put one filament and make it a yarn, we call that a monofilament, or you can uh, put multiple filaments together Sometimes, even if uh, you don't need to, you can give it a little bit of a twist and you can create a single yarn out of multiple filaments. Um, now, the main difference between a filament and a spun yarn is the protruding ends on the yarn. You can see those short, tiny little fibers sticking out of the yarn uh, on a spun yarn. This is a wool yarn. Um, but on a filament, because it is already a continuous long filament, you don't see any of those short fibers sticking out. They are much smoother and they usually also have some luster because they're usually made out of synthetic uh, fibers or man-made fibers. Um, there's also a direction for this twist. So when you twist it in this direction where the middle of that twist, you see that is the middle of the letter Z. That's called a Z twist. If the twist goes in this other direction where it kind of goes in the direction of the middle of the letter S, it's called an S twist. So there are uh, a lot of different kinds of filament yarns. So you can have smooth filaments yarns, you can have bulky filament yarns. So there are a lot of different ways you can create filament yarns. I don't know if you can notice this, but this is a multi-filament yarn with a lot of filaments in it. Uh, I mentioned monofilament and multi-filament. You can also make 
um, tape yarns, or you can make metallic yarns that are coated with plastic or laminated. So um, when you look at the production of filament yarns versus spun yarns, uh, it's a totally different production. So with filament yarns, when you do the production, you go through the spinneret, you know, and the number of holes in your spinneret will determine how many filaments are going to be in one yarn. And you can change the shape of the uh, spinneret holes to create different cross sections. But that whole process, the manufacturing process is a little more expensive than um, when you're making yarns out of staple fibers. Um, because they're very smooth fibers and they're long, you don't have to have a lot of twist on filament yarns. Um, so you can make them low twist or no twist at all, but spun yarns definitely require a lot of twist. Um, you don't have any protruding ends uh, on filament yarns. They shed soil because they're so smooth. So uh, with staple yarns, with spun yarns, you have so many of those short uh, protruding ends that kind of grab soil, but filament yarns are not like that. Um, and you can make them very compact with little bulk. You can give them bulk. Uh, the strength um, of the yarn will depend on individual filament strength. And um, the size is based on the denier system. So we use the denier system to number those yarns. So each fiber is as long as the yarn that you have. Spun yarns are short staple fibers that are held together by some kind of binding mechanism. Spinning is one of the main methods. This is a, a, a very old kind of hand spindle. And this is how people used to spin their wool fibers, for example. You have the fibers and you're um, pushing the spindle to turn and it kind of gives it a twist and you're also drawing the fibers, giving it a little bit of attention and you're winding it as a yarn on a bobbin. So you can mix spun yarns uh, from staples. You can also cut filaments into staples and um, you can spin filament yarns as well. You can also use different texturing methods to add a texture to your yarn. This is an example of a spun yarn. So you can see all these short fibers sticking out of the yarn. It is hairy. It has twist. It's likely to pill because the fiber ends will break off eventually and you'll see pilling more on spun yarns, uh, but they are more comfortable on the skin. And the reason for that is one, because those hairy ends give you a softer feel. So when they touch your skin, it's not so compact. It doesn't really bother, but it does have a soiling problem. So filament yarns are more compact. So the yarn is directly in contact with your skin and it doesn't really have any hairiness. So it can be a little more uncomfortable. We talked about the manufacturing method for filament yarns. We talked about wet spinning, dry spinning, melt spinning. In the staple yarn category, especially for natural fibers, we go through different systems. And it's a totally different spinning system. And the most commonly used one is the cotton system. And then we started modifying the cotton system to fit wool fibers, to fit linen uh, or flax fibers. And we can also use the cotton system on manufactured fibers that are cut into staple. And sometimes, especially when we are blending, let's say polyester with cotton, we cut the polyester filaments into staple fibers, and then we blend it with cotton fibers, and then we spin them going through the cotton spinning system, and then we turn them into a yarn. So when you make the yarn, it's a blend of polyester and cotton fibers together. So uh, I'm gonna talk about those systems. And we'll talk about how spinning is done for short staple fibers and natural fibers. The first step is opening because you have, let's talk about cotton, for example. 
uh, you harvest cotton from the field and you have all of your cotton in these big bales. So you can see this here. They usually uh, create that after the harvest and you have so many of these bales. So what you need to do is open those bales and usually we blend them. So you don't use just one bale. Uh, you have multiple bales from a harvest. You just take a little bit of each bale and you open them up and you loosen them up. So this is called the opening process. And you have to open those because these are really compact when they're first harvested. Next process is carding. And carding is when you start putting all these cotton uh, fibers in and it goes through a lot of cylinders and there are these spiky cylinders where it goes through. And as it goes through, of course, you know, when you first harvest cotton, there's a lot of dirt particles, there's a lot of dried leaf particles in it, and you have to clean that up. So carding is basically that cleaning uh, step. And as the fibers go through all these spiky uh, cylinders, they kind of get combed a little bit, but also anything that is not a fiber falls off that uh, tambour and you see all the dirt particles dropping here and then you keep going through these cylinders and then eventually you get this um, much smoother type of web of fibers uh, that almost forms a yarn but it's a really bulky thick version so we are not in the yarn yet after carding, we are basically just cleaning our fibers a little bit and then trying to make them all combed out to get a more parallel form. And uh, we get a sliver, which is like this. Okay, the sliver looks like that. And it is uh, because you make those yarns fibers more parallel, they kind of stick onto each other and you create that uh, really loose yarn, uh, which is very easy to break at this point because you don't have any twist on it yet. It's more like a web of yarns that are more parallel and they kind of stick together because of that. Now, uh, the next step in the cotton system, uh, if you want to go through the systems, so we opened, then we went through carding, and then we go through drawing. So after drawing, we do an extra combing step. This is when you actually really make them parallel. And this step is only used when you have longer staples. So for short staple and for cheaper cotton fibers, we don't go through this step. We skip this step. But for uh, good quality cotton, Egyptian cotton, long staple cotton, we go through the combing step. And then there's rowing, spinning, and then finally winding the yarns on the bobbin. So uh, we finished opening, we went through carding, and we cleaned and aligned the fibers. So we got a carded sliver. Now we, go, we are going through the drawing process. So we take the carded sliver and we draw the sliver. So you are actually putting a little bit more tension and pulling the sliver and making it a little bit thinner uh, at each step. So drawing is pulling the fibers in the carded sliver and creating a thinner sliver, which is called a drawn sliver. Now, combing is the next step, especially for good quality cotton. And in this case, we take the drawn sliver and we make it even more parallel. You have a lot of these cylinders with these combs on them and the yarns are being combed each time they go through this and they become more and more and more parallel eventually. And the more parallel they are, the more they stick to each other. Now, the next step is rowing. This is also just reducing the size of your sliver and increasing that parallel arrangement of the fibers even more. So the more you do this and draw the fibers a little bit, the more uh, finer your sliver becomes. You are also at this step inserting a small amount of twist on your sliver. 
and you are getting your uh, rolling. So again, if we go through this, so we are inserting a slight twist in the rowing step to our drawn sliver or cone sliver. And then you get the rowing. And then the next step is our final spinning step. So after the sp uh, rowing step, you go through either ring spinning or open end spinning. Those are two types of spinning methods that you can use. Open end is used for cheaper fibers usually. Ring spinning is more commonly used for better quality yarns. And in the ring spinning step, you are also doing some drawing, adding more twists, and then winding your final yarn on a bobbin. So this is the final step. All right, so this is ring spinning. So basically your yarn that, uh, or your sliver that kind of became much finer goes through these cylinders again. There is a little bit of tension here. So you're drawing. And then there's a, a, the yarn comes and goes through a little hook here. And then every, before you're winding it on this final bobbin, it keeps turning. So that adds a lot of twist to your yarn. So this is your sliver that comes and it makes your sliver go through all these little cylinders, which are making it more parallel by drawing with attention. So if you notice, you know, some of those cylinders turn faster than the ones in the back that uh, pulls the sliver, makes your fibers uh, more parallel. And then this turn here is creating a twist before you wind your final yarn on the bobbin. This is the conventional ring spinning process. If we are processing wool fibers, we go through the combing process for worsted wool. And remember, worsted wool is the better quality wool. The woolen was the cheaper, worsted was the better. So if it is worsted, those are the longer staples, you go through the combing process for that. And it, with wool, you have to add a little bit of oil to facilitate the processing because wool fibers tend to stick together because of those um, scales on them. Um, but other than that, the whole process is the same as cotton. So you go through the opening, carding, drawing, possibly combing, rubbing, spinning, and then the winding of the bobbin. Uh, so same process. With the flax, we have the same process. Again, uh, the two different qualities of flax fibers, we call them heckled yarn or toe, or we call them well heckled yarns or line. So well heckled yarns are the more parallel, longer fibers, better quality. So it goes through the combing process. Heckled yarns or toe don't go through the combing process. Um, there are also different types of spinning methods like air jet spinning. In that case, you are using air jet you're using compressed air and blowing air to kind of wrap the yarns around, give it a twist. There's direct spinning. In that case, you don't go through the rowing process. You just go straight to the ring spinning and add your twist there. There's compact spinning. There's vortex spinning. Uh, again, with this one, you're using a lot of compressed air with a vortex to wrap the fibers around. Um, there's twistless spinning. There's self-twist spinning. Uh, so those are different spinning, but the two that you need to know is ring spinning and open end spinning. Now, the difference between combed yarns and carded yarns. Again, if we skip the combing process, we get a carded cotton. Carded cotton is shorter staple. Combed cotton has longer staples. There's not a lot of uniformity in carded cotton, but in combed cotton, the yarns are more regular in size and in appearance. Carded yarns are, because they are shorter staples, they have more protruding ends. Combed yarns are a lot longer, so they have fewer protruding ends compared to carded. Uh, carded yarns are bulkier, softer, fuzzier, um, hairier. Combed yarns are more parallel, they're a little bit finer. Uh, carded yarns are more sensitive to abrasion because of more protruding ends, but combed yarns are stronger and more durable uh, because they are smoother. In carded yarns that are more fibers, because you have shorter fibers, so you have to add more short fibers to create the same length of yarn, combed yarns usually have fewer fibers. 
Um, now, again, the durability is one of the main differences. Carded yarns are not as strong as combed yarns, so carded yarns can become baggy in areas of stress. So for example, if you have jeans made out of carded yarns, on the knee areas, the knees may become baggy over time because of stress, but combed yarns usually don't sag. Blankets and fuzzy, hairy, bulky stuff is usually made out of carded fabrics. Um, and we have a wide range of uses for carded. But one thing, you know, two things I want you guys to remember between uh, carded and combed is carded is less expensive and there are a hairy, bulky, they are short fibers and they are not as durable. Again, for cotton, we call carded cotton or combed cotton. For flax, we call toe or line, or we also call it hackled versus well hackled. And for wool, uh, the carded ones are called woolen and the combed ones are called worsted. This is the difference when you look at a woolen versus worsted yarn. Uh, you can see that woolen yarn has all these like uh, loose arrangement of fibers but in worsted the yarns are the fibers are more parallel so it is a much stronger yarn it's easier to break this yarn versus that yarn uh, filament yarns are more uniform because they're manufactured and the holes on the spinner it determines what the size is going to be but spun yarns or natural fibers you can't really control the fiber diameter. So they come in different sizes and diameters uh, depending on the production. Um, filament yarns always have more luster. Uh, they can be high twist, but they can also be low twist because they don't require too much twist. They have no protruding ends, so they don't have this pilling or linting problem as much. Uh, they are more resistant to pilling. They're stronger than staple fibers. They're very difficult to break those type of yarns. Um, the finer filaments are usually softer um, and strong. Low twist yarns can also be strong. So it's not like spun yarns where if you have low twist, those are easier to break. But with filament yarns, it's not really the case. And the coarser filaments, the filaments with bigger yarn diameter will have more durability and abrasion resistance. Monofilaments are used in fishing lines, sewing threads, sometimes bare elastics. Those are monofilaments. But we use multi-filament yarns for finer, uh, lustrous, silky yarns or bulked yarns. Uh, these metallic fibers here are monofilaments. This is another monofilament polyester yarn. So you see it's very smooth, not, no protruding ends. This is a monofilament spandex yarn, no protruding ends, very smooth surface. And this is a multi-filament yarn. So this entire thing is the yarn, but you see that it's made out of multiple filaments. I mean, there may be a hundred filaments in one yarn sometimes. So you can make really fine uh, filaments and then put them together to make one yarn. Sewing threads, uh, these are different types of sewing threads. So uh, number one is a two ply. We'll talk about what ply means in a second, but uh, you can see this is number one here. It's very smooth, so you can tell it's a filament. Uh, number two is a polyester, but it seems like it is cut into staples and then spun because I can see some short ends coming out of it. Uh, number four is a monofilament transparent yarn. Uh, they use these to make like jewelry sometimes. So you may be familiar with this kind of yarn. This is a, another extra fine mercerized cotton covered polyester. Number five. And then number six is a metallic embroidery yarn. So again, no protruding ends. Tape yarns, um, these are extruded also. They have a ribbon-like cross-section. You can make them into a roll uh, or you can make the yarn, you know, you can make a film and then cut it into slits to create tape yarns. Uh, we can fibrillate the tapes um, so that the yarn is split into fibers. Sometimes we use that to make bulky yarns. 
Um, and we use these type of yarns in carpet backing, ropes, cords, fishnets, bagging. Network yarns have a network arrangement. So they're similar to tape yarns. They have this ribbon-like structure, but they do have this network uh, shape. So if you look at this, for example, uh, these onion bags are made of olefin tape yarns. You guys are familiar with this yarn. This is the spandex core polyester uh, is wrapped around it and then we have a metallic tape yarn over it. Uh, so this is called a combination yarn because you're combining different types of yarns together. Uh, bulk yarns are created to, to make bulky materials. So these are great for blankets uh, and it also gives it a lot more stretch. Um, so this is a filament yarn that is used to create a bulk yarn. So we call them BCF or bulk continuous filament. Um, they are less smooth because of that bulkiness. They are more permeable to air and liquids because there's a lot of gaps inside. So they're not as compact as a regular uh, filament yarn. Uh, they're less slippery. They're more comfortable because of that bulkiness. Uh, they also, because of those gaps, that can kind of absorb or take up some liquid in those gaps. That's why they have less static than compact filament yarns. This is a spun yarn here with the tiny protruding ends. This is a multi-filament smooth filament yarn, and this is a bulk filament yarn. So you can see the difference between those. Uh, there are different categories too. I don't want to go too much into those. Like there are bulky yarns, there are stretch yarns, there are textured yarns. And to add texture, we use different methods. So I'm just going to mention some of those. I don't want to go into too much de detail. But false twist is one method. Um, some of these are mechanical. Some of these use heat to create the texture on the yarn. The false twist method basically gives a twist to the fibers that are usually thermoplastic. With the synthetics, because they have this heat setting property, you give it a little bit of twist, you heat it up so that that twist becomes permanent. When you cool it, it stays in that twist. And then when you just make the yarn, you know, and you relax it, it goes back to that twist. So you create a textured uh, yarn. And it usually looks like a distorted helical coil. Uh, this is the cheapest method. Uh, it's very easy. So you're basically giving a twist with heat setting and then untwisting it. But because it's heat set with that twist, it kind of gets that bulky structure. Draw texturing is usually um, similar to false twist, but you're stretching them slightly and heat setting them and then when you release them, it kind of has that um, texture. A stuffer box is a similar one. So you are stuffing the yarn into this box and you are um, heating that. So it's heat set in that shape. And then when it comes out cooled, it actually stays in that bulky shape. Um, Air jet method uses compressed air to create that volume on the yarn. Knit the knit. In that case, you can knit a fabric, especially filament yarns, and then you kind of heat set them like that. And then when you unravel the fabric, it creates a crimp from the knitting that you made. Um, throwing is an additional treatment that involves twisting and texturing. Uh, we do that for silk fibers usually. Again, remember these main differences. Spun yarns are more comfortable. They have protruding fiber ends. They are not as strong. They are less compact. Filament yarns are more compact, no protruding ends, less comfortable on the skin, and more durable and strong. Uh, if you blend nylon and polyester during the spinning process and make a yarn that has both polyester and nylon, we call it a blend. And then combination is you use two unlike yarns and you twist them together to form a ply. But sometimes we can mix them 
um, so you mix one yarn with the other and uh, you make a fabric, uh, it's usually called a mixture because then in your fabric, uh, one set of yarns are say polyester, the other set is nylon, um, then you have a mixture of these two yarns in the same fabric. Why do we blend? Uh, there are several reasons for that. One is you combine different fibers to get a better combination of characteristics. So you blend cotton with polyester because polyester is not as comfortable on the skin. It's not as absorbent. It, uh, it does have static. So cotton adds those qualities to polyester. And then polyester is much more durable. It's stronger. It has better abrasion resistance. So you are adding durability to cotton. Uh, so this is one reason. The second reason is to improve the processing and uniformity. So if you blend cotton and polyester uh, after you make the yarns, then it's going to be less uniform. You know, it's going to be a different type of structure. So when you blend them as fibers, it makes it easier to process them uh, later on. You also get a better hand, better texture, better appearance when you blend different fibers. It economizes because you know you blend cotton and polyester. Cotton is more expensive, polyester can be cheaper. You're also obtaining cross dyeable effects with blends. So for example, if you have a polyester cotton blend and you make a fabric out of it and you dye it, uh, the cotton yarns are going to be dyed to a different color, polyester yarns may not pick up the color at that same temperature. So you get those cross dye effects on the yarn that creates some interest on the fabric. So the earlier you blend, the more uniform your final product is going to be. Fasciated or rotofill yarns, these are yarns with a staple fiber core that is wrapped with filaments using an air jet method or some other method. You don't see a lot of protruding ends because of the filament on the outside, but you also have the good qualities of the yarns in the inside that's the staple. Yarn processing is a process that does create a lot of uh, impact on the environment. Uh, one, if you ever go to a spinning mill, you're going to see you have to wear hearing protection. You have to wear, wear earplugs because it's such a loud environment. The machines are so loud, they make so much noise. When you are going through the first step of spinning, the opening step, uh, especially if you're working with cotton or staple fibers, there's so much fiber in the air. There's a lot of airborne dust that can get into your lungs. Um, so it can be kind of uh, unhealthy for people who work in those factories. There's a lot of waste from the processing. Uh, we can recycle most of it, but there's still waste that comes out of there. Uh, and also, especially ring spinning uh, requires a lot of labor. Spinning is usually done in cheaper countries and there's some social responsibility that comes with it. Sometimes there's some exploitation of laborers. So those are some of the environmental concerns about yarn processing. Okay, so I do want to go to your iTextiles and kind of summarize everything that we've learned. Uh, again, we learned about spun yarns versus filament yarns. We learned the difference between the two. Uh, we talked about yarn uh, twist, the size of a yarn, the direction of the twist, Z twist versus S twist. We talked about the hairness of yarns. We talked about blends. Uh, I didn't talk about the three main yarn types, simple novelty and composite yarns, uh, because I'm gonna mention them in our next class. We define what, the, what a yarn is. Uh, we show different types of yarns. Again, the monofilament yarns, multi-filament yarns, smooth yarns, uh, spun yarns with twist, you know, and filament yarns with little twist. There are a lot of different types of yarns. Uh, this is jute twine. Uh, this is the yarn and this is a close-up view. It's a staple fiber, it's a natural fiber, so you can see the twist. And if you think about what kind of twist this is, 
Again, remember, this is the middle of an S, so this is an S twist. This is a spun yarn, so you can see the short fibers. This is a filament yarn, you see the continuous fibers, there's no protruding ends. Um, we talked about ring spinning, open end spinning. Uh, we talked about all these different steps in the spinning process. So opening and cleaning, carding, drawing, combing, rubbing, and spinning at the end. And the slivers usually look like this. When you go through the rowing process, it becomes much finer. And then finally, when you make the yarn, it is a whole lot finer. So this is kind of what you get out of the carding process here. And then after the uh, rowing, you get this and then final yarns. And this is a carded sliver. This is a combed sliver. These are cotton fibers. So you can see the difference between the two. Combed looks a little more compact and clean and smooth. Carded is a little bulkier. Um, Verstead and woolen is kind of the same way. Woolen is going to be the carded version and Verstead is going to be the combed version. Um, we talked about open end spinning. Um, we said it's faster, more cost effective. And uh, the reason it's faster and cheaper is usually it goes through, I mean, it goes straight after the drawing process. You don't have to go through the rowing stage with open end spinning. And we talked about multi-filaments versus monofilaments. Uh, again, this is how we manufacture man-made fibers. But with natural fibers, we go through the cotton system or the wool system or the flax system. In a filament yarn, I mentioned uh, however many holes you have on the spinneret will determine how many filaments you're going to have in one single yarn, because all of that becomes one yarn at the end. We talked about these texturing methods like pulse twist, air jet, uh, and so on. So these are some examples of textured yarns. This is not textured. Uh, this is just a regular filament yarn. This is looped. So you have these kind of loops created on the yarn. These, these are curled. So this is uh, how it looks. This yarn is crimped. So this is how it looks. And this is crimped in a different zigzag way. So you can see that. Um, so these are all nylon yarns. Uh, the same type of yarn, but textured in different ways. And you can see from the same kind of yarn, you can create all these different textures. So when you use these yarns to make a fabric, you actually create different uh, type of fabric appearances. You know, the hand of the fabric, the texture of the fabric will look different based on the yarn. Um, this is a bulk continuous filament polyester yarn. So you can see uh, you can make those multi-filament yarns, but create some kind of bulk. And this is how the yarn looks. It's a little bit looser filaments. Uh, interlaced method is another texturing method where you get um, yarns that look like this. And this is a fabric made out of interlaced yarns. In our next class, we'll talk about the three classifications of yarns, uh, simple yarns, novelty yarns, and composite yarns. So I'm going to finish it here, and we'll continue in our next class with this.